Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking a little bit about the V22 Osprey versus the V280 Valor. We're gonna speculate as best we can why the Army decided to go with the Bell V280 over the already produced V22. Why? Because you guys provided us feedback and let us know that you wanted to know more specifics about what makes the V280 any different from the V22. Is one better than the other? Well, that and more we're gonna talk about on today's short video. We're really only gonna dive into the specific things that we know that are publicly available and at best speculate perhaps why the Army chose one over going with one that was already produced. As always, if you like our content, be sure to like, subscribe, drop down in the comment section, let us know what you wanna see more of and we'll do our best to produce that and uh, do our research and give you guys all that we can. Again, thanks for stopping by, onto the video. So kicking things off, we're gonna dive into this product produced by Jane's, which is a great source to find out all sorts of unclassified information. Uh, comparing the V22 Osprey to the V280 Valor. Again, this is all based off of publicly shared data and is a pretty decent resource as a starting point to understand the differences between the two airframes. The first point of note that we're gonna dive into is the max payload. That is the amount that each aircraft can carry inside of it. So internal or useful load, so on and so forth. For the V-22 Osprey, that's gonna be over 9,000 kilograms, roughly 20,000 pounds, whereas the V-280 Fowler is about 12,000 pounds of useful load. This places the Bell V-280's max takeoff weight at roughly 38,000 pounds and the Osprey's maximum takeoff weight of roughly 52,600 pounds. Now, as any pilot knows, the more weight on the aircraft, the more fuel you're going to burn, and the less distance you can cover. This brings us to our next point, which is talking a little bit about the range of the aircraft itself. According to this chart, the V-22 Osprey has a range of 350 nautical miles estimated with a payload of approximately 11 to 12,000 pounds. I find it interesting that they used the specific payload of the Valor's useful load uh, to estimate that number. However, that brings us over to the Bell V280 Valor's range listed as their combat range of 800 nautical miles, which we can assume is under a near full useful load. Now, again, based off of experience, as well as some speculation, we are assuming that that combat uh, in parentheses is referencing 12 passengers with full combat gear. Again, this aircraft was primarily advertised to the Army, and we use our own numbers to generate uh, what an individual combat soldier is going to weigh. And it also is going to be very depending on what type of unit you are supporting, whether that's a light infantry unit or an army, whatever it might be. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure what they are basing that combat uh, range off of. However, we can assume that with that drastic increase at 2,100 nautical miles for a ferry flight, that that is completely empty in terms of no additional cargo, just full fuel. But hey, while we're talking about accommodations in the aircraft, let's take a look at that next two lines down from where we're just talking about range. So the accommodations in a V-22 Osprey are listed at pilot, co-pilot, crew chief, and up to 24 combat equipped troops. For the U.S. Army, that places the V-22 Osprey in pretty much the same mission set and area range and capability that is going to be carried out by a CH-47 Chinook. Transversely, the V-280 Valor has four crew members and up to 12 passengers, which almost identically mirrors the capabilities of a UH-60 Blackhawk. So this brings us back to the feedback that we received in our last video as to, hey, why is the Valor better than the Osprey? Why is it different, etc.? Well, it really comes down to the baseline capabilities of what that actual airframe is designed for. The Bell V280 Valor was designed as part of the new future vertical lift program, but more specifically, the future long range air assault program. Now, with the Army looking for a replacement specifically for the Black Hawk that still maintains all of the capabilities of the Black Hawk, but then also expands greatly on the amount of distance they can cover, it goes to support what Bell stated in that they were successful because they produced an aircraft that could meet the Army standard of carrying 12 passengers a distance of 400 nautical miles or greater. 
Now, we won't dive into the differences in the flight control systems because, quite frankly, we just don't know them not being V-22 pilots ourselves and not being V-280 pilots. However, something that has been noted repeatedly is that the main difference in the aircraft is the actual difference in the way the engines are affixed. Directly from Bell's website, they say fixed engine nacelle design means reduced manufacturing cost, better performance, maintainability, and sustainability designed to reduce the warfighter workload. One of the largest stated issues with the V-22 in its initial inception was the actual rotating engine design itself. This primarily differs in that on the Bell V-280, only the gearboxes and prop rotors rotate. Now, as stated in the last video, we at Battalion all have experience in the UH-60 Blackhawk, and we've all flown a variety of mission sets to include air assault operations. One primary consideration when conducting air assault operations is the area that you are going to. Something that we train is confined area operations, which brings me to the next point, which is the general dimensions of both the V-22 Osprey and the Bell V-280 Valor. The Bell V-280 Valor has a length of 50.5 feet and a width of 81.79 feet. This is only slightly smaller than the V-22 Osprey coming in at a length of 57.3 feet and a width with rotors turning at 84.6 feet. Now to compare these both to the UH-60 Blackhawk, the UH-60 has a length of 64 feet and 10 inches and a rotor diameter of 53 feet and 8 inches. So while the rotor diameter of the Bell V-280 Valor is significantly larger, it may not necessarily have as much of an impact on operations as some may think. With the inclusion of external load missions as a mission set and capability for this aircraft, they can often perform similar if not the same operations that we do with our current airframe. And with the Chinook's dimensions of a rotor diameter of 60 feet and a length with rotors operating at 98 feet 10 inches, this would allow the V-280 to get in just about any type of landing zone that a current CH-47 could operate in. So this brings us back to our main question, and that is the V-280 Valor an improvement from the V-22 Osprey? And the answer to that is that they are just simply different. The V-280 Valor is a replacement for the medium lift size helicopter, where the V-22 Osprey is listed as a medium heavy lift capability with the ability to carry up to 24 combat equipped troops a shorter distance, where the V-280 Valor can only carry 12, but yet go a longer distance. We hope we were able to answer some of the questions that some people may have out there. I know I answered a lot of my own in kind of researching a little bit more into the differences of these. If you like the video, again, be sure to like, subscribe, let us know what you want to see, and we will do our best to provide. Thanks again for stopping by, Brutalian.